What's going on there guys? Good evening. It is Earthmaster here on the live stream. It is uh, Wednesday 420 2022 about 7.05 p.m. California time. Latest Quake shows a 3.0 down here in the area of the Kremdeck Trench. We'll get to uh, some earthquake activity here in a little bit. But I want to talk about some developing space weather events once again. Look at this. Another strong solar flare coming in there very close to the x class category let's go ahead and check this out in a little bit more detail here it looks like we have rounded out roughly about 9.6 and m 9.6 maximum very close to another x flare uh, not for sure what this is coming off of actually it looks like it's coming off of right there hold on a second guys see if you can spot it check it out can you guys find the solar flare? This thing is starting to pop. These, uh, this little, I shouldn't say little, right? It's a large sunspot starting to finally produce some significant flaring. All those, uh, the X 2.2 strongest X flare in the solar cycle 25 that occurred, uh, yesterday, or day before was from the departing sunspot. So now these ones rotating in view are going to be geo effective and these, Probably going to be uh, producing some significant CMEs here in the coming days ahead and all Earth directed. I want to get a shot of this here real quick on my snapshot here since uh, it is kind of just developing. That's a pretty flare. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful flare. And I believe we're looking at the potential for some more strong flaring uh, in the days ahead, folks, including some probably possibly some uh, larger X flares than what we've seen so far in this cycle. So that is going to be sunspot up here. These sunspots, 2993 and 2994. Almost a well-combined sunspot. Look at this complex complexity here. I guarantee you it's probably coming from one of these, one of these right here. I bet you it's that one, 2993. Let's see what we got here. Um, this has not been updated yet, at least in this article. There's a significant radio blackout occurring uh, on the frequency here. Low frequency, 30 to 300 khz, it looks like. And the high frequency, uh, 3 to 30 mhz. So got nav navigation systems there being affected a little bit uh, with the absorption map. Uh, centered, looks like, over the western Pacific here, right around uh, Japan, uh, north of the... Uh, Papua New Guinea region, it looks like, and uh, right around the uh, Philippines as well. So pretty significant event taking place out there on the sunlit side of the earth. Once again, from a significant flare kicking off here. And look at this. Check out these sunspots right here. We got further development. 2996 and 2995 joining the solar weather train. What are these going to do in the coming days? I guess we'll find out, right? Just got to sit back and enjoy the show. And uh, yeah, it looks like that one right there is definitely on the upper flare. 2993 is going to be down here a little bit. So popping off there. Beautiful flare once again, folks. So we'll come back and check, see if um, these guys are going to do an update on it. Sometimes it takes them a little while. I know there's a couple agencies uh, that I can check also, but I uh, kind of like to go to them. They're pretty cool. Okay, earthquake weather, earthquake weather, earthquake activity. Swarming continues down into the Southern California region, right around the Brawley Seismic Zone, where we're seeing uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up here. Uh, this has been going on now for about two days here in the Brawley Seismic Zone, or just in between the Brawley Seismic Zone and the Imperial Fault. We haven't seen any further activity up here on the San Andreas Fault, but we're still looking at swarming, folks. Go ahead and go back here to the seven days, all magnitudes, and we'll zoom into this area and we'll get a better view of how many earthquakes have struck here and, and the migration that is kind of making towards the north. 43 earthquakes, the largest so far, I believe, is going to be the 3.7 we've seen yesterday. So we've seen uh, a couple upper threes now, and the latest three was uh, a little bit earlier this afternoon. So the all magnitudes here. Gives us uh, 43 earthquakes, and then, like I said, a little bit of migration here, moving northward. Looks like it may have started out down here in the south. Now we're getting clutter uh, and movement up here to the north. And, and of course, uh, yesterday, I think this is over the 24-hour period, we've seen some activity 
up here in the southern end of the Salton Sea, a lot closer to the San Andreas Fault Zone up here. But uh, today, uh, not seeing it, but that doesn't mean the uh, potential for a large earthquake is gone, right? Any type of swarming down here around a locked and loaded area, you know, all it takes is just a, a little bump, a little nudge, and uh, it's over. Uh, at least for the 300 and something years built up of pressure in this southern segment of the San Andreas Fault, 8.1 magnitude earthquake uh, in the near future for this area. Looking at uh, the rest of the area down here in the Southern California region, some movement offshore still indicating the pressure, uh, regional pressure in the southern part of the state is, is still pretty high. We're also seeing some further movement down here to the ba uh, Baja California region and also the Gulf of California. Not showing up there on the USGS map, but we'll check the EMSC model here in just a little bit. Uh, Northern California has remained quiet. Washington as well. We haven't seen uh, any further renewed movement here into the Washington area. Uh, I do want to pull up uh, while we're on the Washington uh, topic. Nothing showing up here from the PNSN Tremor Network. Zip, zero, nada. Uh, let's go over to the Mount St. Helens seismograph recordings and see if we have our data back. I know last night... And uh, well, this morning the data was missing from the uh, previous night recorded data. It looks like there's a little bit of uh, uh, data coming in now. Let me check the uh, previous UTC time date. Uh, here, come on, come on, any day now. Yeah, see, there's that gap in data uh, I was talking about this morning. It looks like it's come back a little bit. A couple small microquakes there. Not for sure what that is. Um, Kind of hard to tell if that's an actual earthquake or not. Kind of looks like it, but there's something beforehand uh, that makes me think that it could be, uh, I don't know. I'll we'll have to look into that a little bit further, but uh, definitely some smaller quakes happening there at the uh, Mount St. Helens region. Some small ones, very small ones. No major swarm, no uh, magma movement that I can tell in that area. Uh, Sawtooth Fault System, couple ones, uh, upper two here earlier this morning. Yellowstone National Park did see some movement as well uh, in the area of the northwest corner of the park. Now, that was from late last night. That's going to be this activity right here that showed up. A good 15 or 20 earthquakes or so. Looks like one within the last couple hours as well, but uh, things kind of calming down, tapering off in terms of uh, swarming at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, the rest of the country here. Looks pretty quiet. Uh, nothing really major going on. We had some uh, really small quake around the New Madrid zone at 1.8 and some activity out here in the western Texas area. And uh, one thing I'm starting to notice here, though, is the uptick, not only in the west coast region, but we're getting that activity down here, uh, just on the western side of the Caribbean plate, uh, Caribbean region, and down the middle America Trench off the coast of the El Salvador area as well, getting some... Uh, Pretty shallow movement up and down here. Costa Rica, uh, a couple fours up and down the board here. So a lot of increasing pressure at the surface uh, in this region. And down here into the South America area as well, 5.7 in the Chile region. That uh, earthquake uh, earlier this morning, way earlier. A little activity out here uh, uh, this morning as well in the Co Scotia Sea, a 5.5. Now looking over here, we're getting a return of some deeper adjustments once again remember these deep quakes here we're not here over the past uh, uh i'd probably say over the past week we haven't seen any deep movement here let's go ahead and check out the seven days um let's see here when was the last deep earthquake oh so it looks like yeah it looks like around the 17th it'd be 16th normal date uh, utc time would be the 17th we had one earthquake there uh that was the last one so it's been a couple days three or four days now of no deep movement in this area and uh, today that's starting to come back uh, with a pretty good kick we got one there 4.3 at 577 kilometers deep that's pretty deep folks and down here within the last hour further south 521 kilometers deep so we're getting some major adjustment here now i think a couple things could happen here with the increase in pressure over here to the east i think if we see a little larger movement here along this area say a, a pretty deep uh, six or seven in this region could temporarily uh, relieve some pressure out here along the west coast and areas along the eastern part of the pacific ring of fire but uh, we'll have to see how that plays out we did see another six pointer come into the philippines area 
the Philippine Trench. This makes the second one in the past couple days in this region of the Philippine Trench. Somewhat deep as well into this region just offshore of the Philippines, but into the trench here, the Philippine Trench. Some deeper movement. Uh, we have not seen any further activity up here through the Japan or the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Things remain awfully quiet in that region. Uh, one earthquake here north of New Zealand, a 4.9 in the Kermadec, uh, Kermadec Islands. Pretty shallow movement. And I think we had one way south here. Uh, looks like a uh, 5.8 occurring down here in the southern Pacific Ocean at uh, about 10 kilometers for that earthquake. So a little bit of movement down here in the southern end of these plates uh, throughout the day today. A couple fives. A couple zones to watch pretty closely, obviously, with the movement here in the California region. Got uh, one earthquake here just coming in now near Gilroy, a 1.5 at 3.4 kilometers, just off the San Andreas Fault Zone, uh, which sits right about here. Looks like it's on the Sargent Fault Zone. Bay Area looks pretty quiet aside from that. And, uh, yeah, I can tell you, it's just uh, it's something to watch pretty closely here, folks. There's no... No messing around when it comes to swarming. I get it. We get tons of swarms out here. Uh, and a lot closer at times here to the Salton Sea area on the Brawley Seismic Zone. Within probably about, who knows what, seven miles, eight miles of the San Andreas Fault. But all it takes, you know, all it takes is that one little bump uh, to unwind 300 and, uh, what, 320 years of built-up pressure. 30 feet of strain, they believe, up here on the southern segment. I get it. Other sections have gone. 1906 and the uh, uh, the um, what was it? 1879, 1859. One down here. But either way, it any of these could go at any time. But the main one down here, you know, it's obvious it's going to happen pretty soon. I have I have that strange feeling. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, so far as earthquake activity goes, that's about it. I want to check out the solar weather uh, movement once again on the map and see if these guys have updated anything uh a near x flare yeah they did they're pretty quick on that a near x flare m 9.6 just peaked uh around earth facing sunspot 2993 okay so they're saying it's the southern one to me it kind of looks as though like it's on the uh on the upper flare up here oh yeah 2993 that's right 994 is the new one. Okay, getting a little mixed up on all these sunspot numbers. So this is on the newer one that's above the old region, 2975. Uh, let's see, the region is now in a good position for Earth-directed eruptions. More to follow regarding this event. Stay tuned. So, uh, I'm sure CMEs are possibly heading towards us. I'm not for sure if we've uh, got any capture of any uh, significant CME. But that will be coming up here in the hours ahead. Uh, but for now, that uh, beautiful flare up there, I am sure it's going to kick off some more of this whole active region uh, in the coming days, folks. Let's see what else we got here. I want to check this one-day data. Yeah, it's definitely coming down. But it's been kind of consistent with these, uh, kind of spread out with these activities. But, you know, we can't really be 100% certain on on these uh, charts here when, when we think the next one might happen uh it's just it's going to happen regardless if we think it's going to happen or not right uh things are definitely popping and cooking and we've been consistent with sea flares for uh, a couple days now in that sea flare category and of course we have the m's and the x's and now almost another x flare kicking off here and that definitely looks like it did produce a cme but uh we'll do a little bit further update later on folks when i find out a little bit more info on it but uh, I do want to uh, bounce off here. I do hope everyone has a good evening. Uh, I've seen, uh, what do we got here? Still in SoCal, 42. I appreciate the donations. Uh, donations definitely go right back into this channel, uh, not only for quality, but also um, for uh, reporting out there in the field uh, when it comes to volcanoes and earthquake activity and, uh, of course, some storm chasing stuff. So I appreciate that. Still in SoCal, 42. Uh, for the $3 donation very much. Uh, and we will chat to you, everyone a little bit later uh, when I get some more information on this sunspot. For, for now, have a good night, folks. Enjoy the uh, 420 date. We'll chat you guys a little bit later on. Peace out.